Today, let's look at resumable uploads. Now, specifically in the context of a React Native application. So what we want is in our Expo app, we want a document picker. We want to be able to just pick an image from the camera roll or multiple images, multiple documents, you know, take a photo, all that good stuff, and then upload it to Superbase without having to worry about, you know, network stability. And so that is one big benefit of resumable uploads where we're using the open source TAS protocol. So this is really cool. It's an open protocol for resumable file uploads. You know, more and more photos and videos um, and a lot of apps pretty much are built on exactly that. But, you know, mobile networks remain fragile depending where you are in the world. And so therefore having kind of this resumability built in is really useful. And so Superbase Storage provides the TUS protocol. It provides a TUS server that you can directly consume with a TUS client. And so for example, we can use the TUSJS client within our React Native applications to upload images in a resumable manner to make it easier to manage kind of these large file uploads on mobile. So let's have a look at what this looks like in the app. Now, first of all, to get started, um, as with any Superbase project, the way to get started is to go to database.new. So here we select our organization and we give it a project name. So our project name is just going to be Super Expo Tus. We can generate a password. Now, if we're doing this, I recommend you copy the password. What I like to do is if I have a .env file, you can put it in there. Just make sure, you know, it is a secure file that you aren't uploading to your Git. You know, you're not tracking in your Git history. So make sure you have that in your Git ignore. And then select the region closest to you or your users, depending on where you're building this application. Of course, later you can also add um, read replicas if you need that for your application. And then we can already go ahead and we can copy out our public anon key. So in this case, we're not implementing any auth. So if we're using a public key, so this one expo public, make sure you know that will be exposed in your application. So only use the public anon key there, not the secret service role key. And then we need our URL to get started. And we can paste that in, save that in here. So we're ready to go. Now, while all of this is spinning up, we can check our project status here. So some things, uh, storage, for example, is still spinning up. So what we can do is we can look at our app first. So I just used the create expo app here and I used the there is expo image picker example. So I've built up on that, but then I also added in the document picker. So that is the great thing about TUS. We can upload kind of any sort of document under the sun. Uh, and then here we have our upload files and we'll see at what that implementation looks like in a second. But first we'll have a little look at sort of the image picker. So we'll have some kind of activity indicator, which is just kind of our loading sp spinner. We're rendering some controls. So we have a button here that is pick a document. We have pick an image from the camera roll uh, and our different functions that are being triggered. And then we also have take a photo. Take a photo won't work on the simulator though. So just watch out for that. Now, in order to you know request media library permissions, so um, that is something we need to do. So we need to ask permission. So here we can do that with the image picker. And we can, you know, if we're asking permission for the media library, we can use this here, or we can ask permission to, to access the camera uh, to take a photo, for example. And so here you see kind of, for example, in the take a photo, we first are asking for the camera permission. And then what we're doing is we're launching the camera asynchronously. Uh, we're allowing edits here. For the edits, we're uh, specifying an aspect ratio. And then we just have a method called handle assets picked. And there we're just putting in the image picker result. Uh, same kind of with 
the media library, very similar launch image library async. Uh, specifically here, we are allowing all media types. What this means is we're allowing images and videos to be uploaded. And we're also saying allow multiple selection true. So we can select multiple um, assets here. So we have, again, the handle assets picked. And the same for the document here. We have the document picker. Uh, we don't need to request permission for that. And then we say get document async. And we are just, in this case, we're saying copy to cache directory false. Uh, so in some cases, if you're using kind of, a, if you're working with the file system package in Expo, that's, that's really useful as well. Um, then you might want to set that to true to be available kind of within the file system directly. Or, you know, in our case, we're not using the file system here. We're just using the TUS.js client. And then we're again allowing multiple selection and we're just doing this handle as it's picked. So in our case, we're just allowing the picker results from the image picker and the document picker. And then really what we're just doing is we're checking that, you know, it wasn't canceled, the selection. And then really we're just uploading our files to a bucket called TUS. So in our case, the upload file. So let's have a look at what this upload files integration looks like. So here we're just using the TUS.js client, a really, really great open source project. Huge shout out to the maintainers here. And they've also thought about kind of supporting React Native, which is great. And so we just have a little help of function here where we're getting the file extension from the URI. So one thing that is maybe interesting here is that we're, you know, we're not getting a file back, but rather, you know, we're getting a URI to kind of the destination of the file kind of within the file system. And so what we then do is, you know, to, to upload files, if we're looking at this here, what we're doing is just we're mapping through all the assets. So in our picker results, we have an array of assets. Uh, and then we're just mapping through here with the file, which is either um, then an image picker asset or a document picker asset. And we're just creating a new promise here that we're then returning. So in the end, we'll have an array of promises. That's our all uploads here. And so what we're doing is we're just getting our file extension. And then one thing we're doing here kind of as a workaround to, you know, because we have the file uh, URI, so that's the destination of the file kind of on, on the system. And what we can do is to kind of convert that to a blob is we can fetch it and we can then say response blob. So that is the way kind of we get a blob here. Now, it might not be the best approach. So in some circumstances, depending on how large that image is, this blob approach doesn't work. Image is generally fine, but if you have kind of a video with many, you know, hundreds of megabytes, then that might be a downfall there. So there is some issues that you can look into that are kind of tracking that on the TaskJS client repository. So yeah, I'm also checking with the team to see kind of what we can do to make that more robust. But for now, you know, depending on your use case, that might be fine. And then basically, we're just saying an upload. So uh, a new task upload, we need kind of uh, either a file object, a blob, or kind of a readable stream default reader here. So we're just putting in our blob here for our endpoint, we're providing the storage upload resumable. So that's, that is where our TAS server is located on our Superbase project. We're doing some um, kind of basically exponential back offs here. We're saying the retry delays that, you know, we want to retry. And then one important piece here is we need the authorization. So we're a bearer authorization here. And in our case, we haven't implemented any authentication. So we're just passing in the Superbase Anon key. So the Superbase Anon key, what we can do is, you know, if we have auth implemented and, you know, I'm going to link you some examples. There's also a great video on kind of Expo user management, how to build that into your Expo React Native application. And so what you can do if you have a session, there's an access token, a user access token in that session. And what you can do is you can fill in the user access token here as an alternative to the Anon key. And that means then you can write RLS policies to restrict uploads, to restrict updates as you're used to with kind of RLS 
which is great. Now for absurd true, you can set that as well if you want to be able to override kind of an existing file. Um, again, remember that uh, requires kind of an RLS update policy as well for that to work. And then there's just some configurations here. Yeah, where we'll have some metadata that we're putting in. So the bucket name is just what we put in, in our case, which is called a TUS uh, as the bucket name. And then here we'll need to pass an object name. So from the file, actually, we can get a name. So this is slightly different depending if you're the image picker or the document picker. For some reason, the types don't entirely check out here uh, yet. So I'll need to check on that. But yeah, so in the case of the image picker, I believe it is file name. In the case of document picker, it is name. Now, in the case that we don't have any of these, we just set a timestamp to the current date. And then, yeah, we specify the content type. So that's where we had our helper there and we can set a cache control. So this is used for the smart CDN feature within Superbase storage uh, chunk size. And now in this case, currently for the Superbase test server, that needs to be six megabytes. So keep that in mind here. And then we just have a couple handlers. So error handler, progress. So on progress, we're basically just outputting the kind of progress upload uh, percentage basically there. And then on success, we're just saying, okay, upload options, metadata, and the object name, we're just saying, okay, we've uploaded that specific object. And then we're just resolving our promise. Now, one thing here as well is if we want, you know, for the resumable uploads, kind of any previous unfinished uploads, if we want to continue those, we're just checking, find any previous uploads, and then we're just resuming from previous upload. And lastly, just starting the upload and we're good to go. Now in our case, because we're allowing multiple file uploads, in this case, we're basically just waiting for all the promises to be settled. We're not doing anything with the response here. So all settled will give us an array of all the results from the settled promises. But in our case, we're just returning. So I'll leave that up to you kind of in your implementation. Okay, so now the second piece to that is to configure our project. So our project, you can see now the status, everything is up and running. And so within storage, we will need to create a new storage bucket. As I mentioned, we're going to call this bucket TUS, save that. And so now we need to configure a couple of policies for our bucket. So as I mentioned, in our case, we don't have any auth implemented. So we'll just allow um, public uploads. So we'll need to the insert. We also need to allow for the select in this case. And yeah, update. So, you know, we want to be able to uploads, select uploads. Yeah, select is our downloads and then our upserts. So it's kind of our, our updates in there. And then specifically, we want to allow this for the Anon role because, you know, we're using the, the, the Anon key here. And then uh, we just need to specify our bucket ID. So we can review our policy. So allow public uploads, downloads on storage objects for insert to Anon with check bucket ID. And then also we have a select policy here for select to bucket ID test. Okay, so we're saving these policies here. So we have our three policies for insert, update, select. So now with our policies all set up, what we can do is we can run our application npm run start. And we open up our iOS app. Let's quickly make sure this is refreshed. And so now we can pick a photo here from that. We can see now we're uploading. You see we uploaded our image 111. And so now if we go back to our storage bucket, there we are. Uh, this is great. And so here we have our image. Okay, so far, so easy. Nice thing, we can pick a document and because we have our, um, you know, MIME uh, helper here, file extension, that just automatically works. And we're uploading, we're uploading PDFs. That is great. But so now where this, you know, really shines is if we're, you know, uploading multiple things, multiple um, images. So here, one, two, three, four, five. 
And so now our network drops, right? So I'm just turning off the Wi-Fi here. You can see networking has been disabled. So, you know, we're trying to upload, but, you know, obviously here we can't reload as well because we don't have any network. But because, you know, we have our um, trusty TUS uh, protocol, resumable uploads, and we're retrying, we have a bunch of retry delays in here. So now when we re-enable the Wi-Fi, so as the network comes back, our uploads are resumed and we can go back we can reload and now you can see we have all our lovely images uh, safely on our storage bucket here. Lovely, that is all working as intended. Now, obviously, since this is JavaScript here, we can also try this out on the web. Now, obviously, here with pick a document, we've allowed kind of all of the different documents so we could upload images or videos or, you know, what have you. Maybe we'll just upload this image here. And so now if we go back to our buckets. So this was very nice. I was visiting New York City and the WeWork had a free photo shoot for the members, headshot photo shoot. So I put out my super cap. Maybe we do an impromptu super cap giveaway. So the first person to comment concrete jungle down below gets a super cap yeah let's try that out just one uh the first person so we'll see who actually watches these videos full fully through um fantastic yeah so this works um yeah obviously so this was now the document picker we can also use the uh image picker we're having um an impromptu meetup in vietnam on friday so that is exciting vietnam and super base lovely Okay, great. And so that is really what I wanted to show you, kind of how you can utilize resumable uploads in React Native with TAS JS client uh, using Expo Image Picker, Expo Document Picker. So yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let us know what else you'd like to learn and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.